Welcome, I'm Jen Robitaille. I'm the Elementary Math Specialist for the Maine Department of Education. And I'm Michelle Maya, Secondary Mathematics Specialist for the Maine Department of Education. Today we're going to talk to you about the eight effective teaching practices. The National Council of Teachers of Mathematics published Principles to Actions, Ensuring Mathematical Success for All in 2014. It is in this book, the eight effective mathematics teaching practices are described. We will provide a brief overview of these practices by sharing a description of the practice and some student and teacher actions. Please feel free to pause the video as you need to read the information on the slides. The first teaching practice is to establish mathematics goals to focus learning. The intent of this teaching practice is to provide clear goals for what students are learning and to guide instructional decisions. Teachers identify how these goals fit into the mathematics learning progression and students may use these goals to focus on their progress in improving their own understanding of math content. The next teaching practice is implement tasks that promote reasoning and problem solving. The intent of this teaching practice is to support the selection of tasks that allow opportunity for all students to engage in a variety of cognitively demanding tasks involving reasoning and problem solving skills. Think low floor, high ceiling, allowing access for all students to engage in the mathematics. The next teaching practice is to use and connect mathematical representations. The intent of this practice is to engage students in making connections among mathematical representations to deepen their mathematical understanding of concepts and procedures. Teachers may focus on selecting tasks that allow for multiple representations and ask students to explain and connect various representations. Students will use drawings, diagrams, or manipulatives to describe the mathematics and to work to connect a variety of representations, deepening their understanding. Next, we have facilitate meaningful mathematical discourse. The intent of this teaching practice is to support students in sharing their thinking about the mathematics they are engaging in. Teachers may find it helpful to implement the five practices, which include anticipating, monitoring, selecting, sequencing, and connecting student work when facilitating discourse. That is student-centered rather than teacher-led. The next teaching practice is pose purposeful questions. The intent of this practice is to use intentional, purposeful questioning to move forward student thinking and understanding. This practice focuses on two main types of questions, focusing and funneling, and the purpose for each of the types of questions. Teachers will use purposeful questioning to go beyond gathering information to questions that require explanation and justification. Students are actively engaged in answering questions with explanations, clarity, and elaboration on their mathematical thinking. Next, we have build procedural fluency from conceptual understanding. The intent of this teaching practice is to provide students with opportunities to explore mathematical concepts, to deepen their conceptual understanding, which will then transfer to procedural fluency. This is done through the connections the teachers help to make between the student-generated strategies and methods to more efficient procedures as appropriate and allowing opportunities for distributed practice. The next teaching practice is support productive struggle in learning mathematics. The intent of this practice is to allow students to have opportunities to engage in mathematics that may require some productive struggle as they dig into the mathematics. As students grapple with the mathematics, they continue to push through appropriately challenging problems in a productive way. Teachers may anticipate what students may struggle with and will be prepared to support them without 
rushing in to save students from productive struggle. Learning occurs in that productive struggle. Students persevere in solving problems even when they may not know how to proceed, but they do not give up. They will support one another as they move forward with the task. The final teaching practice elicit and use evidence of student thinking. The intent of this teaching practice is to support a variety of decisions that will be made before, during, and after instruction. Teachers must first determine what evidence of student learning they anticipate to see during instruction. Teachers then must make in the moment decisions during instruction to further support student learning as needed. And finally, teachers will make decisions based on reflection of evidence for future instruction and revisions to lessons. Students will be reflecting on and assessing their own learning based upon the feedback, discourse, and support provided during and after the learning experience. For more information on these eight effective teaching practices, visit the Principles to Actions Professional Learning Toolkit on the NCTM website. Non-NCTM members may access some of the resources in the toolkit, while NCTM members will have full access to this toolkit.